there team, uh, it's Darren here again from Faster Fitness Solutions and welcome to this next instalment of our Faster Weight Training video series. Now, this one is super, super important, all right, because we are going to cover today the deadlift. Now, the deadlift, whether your goal is bodybuilding, strength conditioning, this should really form a stable part of your training regime. If it doesn't, start doing it. <laughs> the reason being is because everything that you do, especially with your, like, your Olympic bars, comes from a deadlift, all right? Even doing stuff with kettlebells, um, dumbbells, if you're doing anything from the floor, like a squat, learning how to deadlift them properly is really a staple. And kind of working through that hip hinge and being able to execute that movement it's really, really essential, all right? Because it's coming from jumping, um, even like accelerating from a sprint, that hip hinge and movement is really, really important, okay? So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna talk about the deadlift a bit, and we're gonna go through very common mistakes that people make, and we're gonna talk about like areas that you might struggle with and why you might not be able to get in a good position where you can keep a good stack straight spot and during the lift as well. So, hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you find it useful. Here we go. So guys, if you're struggling in the gym to build muscle and drop fat, then why not check out our Men's Bigger, Faster, Stronger program. I've got a proven track record of getting results just like the ones in the photos. These are past and current clients of mine. And if you'd like to get similar results, get yourself beach ready, then visit www.fasterfitnesssolutions.com Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. So, whenever we talk about the deadlift, the first thing we have to talk about is the setup, all right? And the setup is super, super important, okay? So, foot position to start us off. So our foot position wants to be toes pointing forward, about hip width apart, okay? And then what you're gonna do is, a lot of people, a lot of mistakes, uh, a mistake a lot of people make, sorry, is they're too far away from the bar, all right? And they're lifting already forward. So that bar just wants to pull them forward for immediately, all right? So what you need to do is set yourself up under the bar. So when you're looking down at your toes, it looks like the bar is cutting your toes off from the bottom of where your shoelaces start on your shoes, okay? So then our feet are under the bar, and this allows us to keep the bar right underneath our center of gravity. All right, so then all we're gonna do, we're gonna squat down, and I like to go quite narrow, all right, with my stance, but most people will be a little bit wider. Most people will be about shoulder width apart or slightly wider, okay? I like to go quite narrow, all right? But if you're struggling with flexibility, a little bit wider, and even a little bit wider stance might help, okay? But everybody will have like slight variations in how they deadlift and how they like to do this, all right? So there's not kind of one size fits all, there is room for a little bit of leeway and a little bit of play. All right. So what are you looking at doing though? I like to go quite narrow, and I like to ha and I like to push my knees into my elbows as I deadlift. All right. I like me to keep everything in straight lines, and it feels like I'm nice and stable, and I can generate a lot of force through the deadlift. So I'll show you from the side, so you can see the back position. I'll spin the bar around and show you from the front as well. Okay. So we're down. I like to grab the bar. And I, use, I like to use a hook grip, all right? And that's where I wrap, put my thumbs underneath the bar, and then I wrap my fingers over my thumb. It's a really strong grip position. It takes a bit of getting used to at first, it's very uncomfortable. But once you get there, I, I'm lifting up to about 190 at the moment, and I never feel my forearms or my grip strength go in, all right? My back and my legs get tired before my grip strength does. So this, grip, this hook grip really has been like a revelation. Okay, you can also use straps if you want, but for me, you're only as strong as your weakest link, so I like to go without straps. So, we're gonna go nice and narrow, knees just into your arms. I like to go into that hook grip, and then what I like to do, just rev around, so I point my knuckles at the floor, and that pulls the bar in close to me. And we're gonna squat down, so my bum is always just above my knee, so I don't need to be here, I need to be about there, okay? And then, all we're gonna do, is look up and I'm going to pull on the bar, it's called taking the slack out of the bar and I squeeze my shoulders back just before I lift, alright? So I'm in this position there, 
squeeze the shoulders back, and then I'm popping up, dragging the bar up my body, and then dropping it back down again, all right? So I'll show you again. Now a mistake a lot of people make with a deadlift is that their legs go and the bar stays on the floor. As soon as you push down into the ground, you've got to get that bar coming off the ground, all right? So you're almost squatting the first part of the lift. So I'll show you again. So we're there, as soon as I push in, without my back even changing, look, you can see the bar just above my knees, and then I'm up, all right? And all the while, I'm keeping that lovely straight back position. So I'll show you a couple of times. Boom. And literally, as soon as I put pressure through the floor, start straightening my legs, that bar comes up. All right, so I'll show you a couple of quick goals from the front. So again, I'm about hip width apart with my feet, toes right underneath the bar, grabbing the bar just either side of my knees and my feet, okay? And then all I like to do, wrap my thumbs in, fingers over, rev round so my knuckles are pointing up the floor. I sit in, head up, and as soon as I push into the ground, I'm pulling that bar up with me, pumping it down. And I'll show you one more time. So sitting in, head up, take the slack out of the bar, pull it in, and that bar fell, never straight forward, all right? So I get my weight back through my heels immediately, and that bar's always coming towards me as soon as I put power through the floor to pull that bar up, okay? So, there you go, little run through. Feet, hip width apart, hands just to the outside of your knees. If you can use a hook grip, go for it. If not, just a standard grip. Make sure you wrap your thumbs around your fingers, but ideally, practice that hook grip. All right, so it's thumbs under the bar, and then fingers over the top of your thumbs, locking them in place. Really, really super strong grip. You're gonna put arms either side of your knees, and I like to push my knees into my forearms, all right? So it gives me that stability. Okay, and then you're looking at bum position, just above your knees, pull up on the bar and retract the scapula, all right? So you're pulling your shoulder blades back, taking the slack out of the bar, and then as soon as you push down to squat, you initiate a squat to take a bar up, and then the second half of the lift is with your back. So it's almost like a squat, straighten, yeah? Don't leave the bar on the floor when you straighten your legs. As soon as you straighten your knees, that bar should be coming up, and you're always pulling the bar back and into you all the time. Weight should be through your heels, and you should never feel like you're falling forward. So, hope that cleared up a little bit of the deadlift. Um, say something controversial here, just to stir things up. If you really struggle with flexibility through your hips, and you end up with a little bit of a curved spine, it's not the end of the world, all right? It's not as dangerous as we first thought. Um, you're probably not gonna slip a disc. I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time because I don't think we know enough about it yet, but there have actually been studies where people have pulled heavier weights with a slightly rounded spine, all right? But you always wanna try, keep that back stacked, really integrate and use your hips, all right? So you don't wanna overload your back because that's gonna get tired before anything else. So you're always looking at being in that position, squatting that first bit, hip hinging, and using the lower back for the second bit. All right, it is gonna be a bit stiff on your lower back. It's a lower back exercise, but you really have to work on getting that bar off the floor early, bringing it back towards you, keeping it in the center of gravity. So apologies for waffling, but it is quite a technical exercise, and if you can do it right, really is gonna push you on in your training and allow you to move into other stuff like Olympic lifting, snatching, cleaning and pressing. Um, it's gonna help you get better with kettlebells. So it really is gonna open you up in terms of how well you can train and you know, kind of, yeah, the things that you can do and the things that you can execute really well with good technique. So hope you found the video useful and I'll see you again for the next installment.